Welcome to another episode of Haunted Stories with your host, Scott Latea. sitting there uh, with some of those people. Um, but to kind of to get, go back to like where it all started, um, it, it was with me. Before meeting Marie, um, I grew up haunted. I experienced things uh, I couldn't explain. And unfortunately back then we didn't have these, these excellent shows that we watched with this sensationalism, but yet still, you know, we're able to uh, identify with. We didn't have that. But what we did have, as my grandmother had, is Reader's, Reader's Digest, they were called. And there was little tiny stories about people like Ed and Moraine Warren. And I remember searching through all these magazines and stuff, and I would read these little articles. Um, when kids were reading like books like Cat in the Hat, I was reading books about cryptozoology, and I was reading books about mummies and uh, end times and, and things like that. I was kind of a weird kid. Um, but... I, <laughs> Thanks, that um, the activity kind of got like crazy as, as a kid. It, there, were, there was points in my life where I remember uh, sitting there at, up at night uh, and having these experiences where these children would come to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and these children were like, at first they were like normal and they were like, you know, like, hi, how are you? And I'm like, why the hell are you in my room? <laughs> and uh, the next thing you know, like they'd become very personable and they would they'd be closer and closer. And then, then the touching began um, from these things where they would like be up in my face um, as I'm trying to sleep. And then things started turning really sinister, like, you know, face just dripping from bone. Um, and these things were, were obviously, you know, trying to scare me and intimidate me, and it worked really well. Um, so I started building like, you know, these fortresses at nighttime and like this crazy like tents I would make out of blankets and like, oh, this is gonna protect me. I would try to stay up late, uh, read comic books, wouldn't, wouldn't, didn't wanna go to sleep, you know, because I, I know that I'd be woken up in the middle of the night by these things. Um, so I, I had a few options. Uh, I, I could have ran away from it, you know, as, as I got older. Uh, I could have just lived with the fear, and, and none of these things ever seemed to, to work. Or I could go out and see cancers, you know, and follow our idols like Scooby Doo. But um, it, it's one of those things that uh, I never was able to really um, understand as a child. But as I got older, um, I got more interested, I got more aggressive in my search for answers. Uh, as time went on, and, and as I became, uh, uh, you know, so I was like 17. Uh, I, had a, I had a near-death experience. Uh, I was the big guy on campus. I was completely like expected to be the super badass guy and do everything better than everybody else, and including like stupid things. And uh, one evening, uh, the, some of those stupid activities that I was uh, enjoying a little too much uh, ended up uh, being the death of me temporarily. Mm. And uh, in that experience, uh, I, I saw heaven. Uh, I saw hell, I saw my life flash before my eyes. Um, I recall um, sitting in this, uh, only way I can describe it is like a, a lake of fire, um, but it wasn't on fire where I was at. Uh, I had a crown of thorns on my head, I was surrounded by thicket and brush. I could hear people screaming, God, let me come back for one minute, one second, one day, one hour to warn people that this place truly really exists. I'm not trying to convert anybody here. I don't care what religion you are. I work with people all the way from skeptics to Satanists. So in no way am I judging people trying to convert somebody into a particular religion. But in this particular situation, 
uh, the, my life kind of flashed before my eyes. And all those good times I had, and all these bad times, and all oh, those bad times really sucked. And then I realized I was kind of in a permanent housing unit in the bottom of this lake, and I was about ready to be caught on fire. And I kind of realized what was happening. Um, the last scene of my life that flashed before me was my grandmother, who's since passed a huge inspiration to me in my life, uh, even today. Um, she had said, uh, if you, you know, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can out. And I remember her saying that in the scene of my life, which she had actually in life, you know, she had told me this before multiple times. And uh, I ended up being tried in this place where at one point in time I was up on this, this gigantic cliff. And uh, I was a big dude, man. I was like, I was on my way to get like a pro card before I was like 20 in powerlifting. And this guy comes out of the shadows on top of this cliff and he's wearing a red checkered thermal like shirt, you know, and straggly blondish hair, probably like 130 pounds soaking wet, six foot tall-ish, you know, boots, ripped jeans, the darkest eyes that I've ever seen in my entire life. There is a darkness in this world that is far darker than any kind of uh, color that Crayola could come out with. There's a darkness that has both life and death all at one time. It's all encompassing and it's something that is so, um, you know, once you've seen it, and some of us have as investigators, we've seen this with people, um, it's, it's uh, something that's very frightening. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but anyways, to make a very, very long story short, uh, this man, who like pretty much knew everything about me and like uh, you know if you you know and I'm screaming God I'm trying to scream God and he's like oh God you know just like it's stereotypical right you know and then he's like you know if 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 there was a God then you know why did your father leave your mother and why did this happen and why did that happen he's getting closer closer to my face I notice he's standing in this fire between us and I'm like oh my gosh like, this really sucks you know like, what am I gonna do like I don't even know like I'm, I'm like already just to give up and I remember at one point him yelling at me I fell down off this rock. And I'm at the edge of this cliff, and these things are like just reaching at me to pull me down. Mm -hmm. And I remember that last scene in my life. <clears throat> Excuse me. With my grandmother, that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can part mountains. And uh, I held on to that. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, um, I was able to utilize what little faith I had in a place that was absent from both, you know, any kind of love or God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fought back. And um, essentially what happened, to make, again, a very long story short, um, I was I, I, I pretty much bargained with God. And I said, God, you let me come back. You give me the pulpit, I'll tell the world. Whatever you put before me, you give me the audience, I will tell the audience. Okay, if it's one person, two persons, three persons. Now Marie and I both, about what, last year? We, we had an audience, huge audience, several hundred people at a very big convention, and she made me break down like in the middle of conversation because I was at a pulpit, essentially a pulpit, like a preacher's, you know, thing. And I'm like sitting there, and she's like, Jay, that's your pulpit. And I was like, oh, Jesus. So like, it was like right before we were about to go on, so I just like, you know, like, Devin, I'm like, I'm a softy, dude. Yeah. So I just completely like just lost my shit and explained to everybody what happened. Um, well, um, with uh, that being said, I, I essentially after that, uh, again making a very long story short, um, I kind of fell into the church and I got excommunicated from the church almost immediately um, for believing in what we all believe in, afterlife, death, angels, demons. Um, I would speak to the people, people would come up to me and they would come to me with some dark stuff and I would, I would counsel them, I would talk to them, I would speak to them and they weren't really happy with it. So we just kind of parted ways. Um, essentially, well, other not, if I didn't leave willingly, it would just get the hell out of here. And then I met, shortly after that... Best thing in your life? Aww. <laughs> the best thing in my life. Me? I have a totally different life. I lived in bubbles and sunshine, and I did not know what paranormal was. I did not all my life until I met this wonderful man. Um, I, the only ghost I knew was Casper. Aww. The friendly ghost on TV. Um, I... I remember the first time we actually sat down to talk and we weren't even really dating at this time. He was like, oh, well, you know, just heads up, I have things that happen to me. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, yeah, no, no. And probably a week later, things started happening when we were around each other. So um, another thing that's interesting um, is I had two uh, children from a previous marriage. Um, one of them is autistic um, and his birthday, is the exact same day 
that he actually had his near death experience. Wow. So, and. August 13, 1999 um, was the date in which my near death experience took place. And, and that's day, our, August 13, 1996. So, so it was, um, and those two bonded. Um, my autistic son, probably from the age he started talking, kept saying he saw things. I was like, oh, he's autistic, he has mental illness. He, you know, it's all that. I always trip, push it off. When he started coming around, him, they bonded. Mm -hmm. I mean, their, their relationship just completely. Um, my son didn't even want to be around me anymore because mom did sort of believe him, so. And, and plus, I was kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, for that reason, <laughs> I actually was like, okay, wait a sec. I need to learn more about this paranormal thing. And I think that's when I started dabbing into it and finding out what actually yeah, was out there. And this is a very condensed version of obviously. So you're not awesome. Yeah, oh. no, right? Uh, Jamie's Marie. Oh. Not the first time. Uh, funny thing is, is I actually, like, the first day I went over to uh, have, like, this double date at our house. Like, we didn't have dinner or something. I don't know. And, like, we she, he wasn't told, she wasn't told that I was coming over and my best friend was her cousin. So I come over to the house, she's like washing dishes, she's like, oh my god, that guy's here. And then like she runs back and stuff and let's just say, like, you know, like the evening uh, progressed and, uh, you know, we, I was about ready to leave and a kid caught my eye. Oh, Jesus, I'm emotional today, God. Um, kind of emotional day anyways, right? Right. Yeah. Um, this little guy caught my eye. Um, with his hands reaching out in the darkness from his little pet. It was my one-year-old son. Aww. I've never willingly ever held a baby at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I was a big guy, so everybody was like, oh, hold the baby so we get the picture, so you look like an idiot, you know? This little tiny baby in your hand, and like you're this gigantic guy. And uh, for some reason, I saw him, and I picked the kid up. And, uh, I'm going to fall in love with him. It, honestly, the reason I really did fall in love with him, he fell in love with my kids yeah. before he fell in love with me. So that right there. But the, but the real interesting fact about that night, and kind of bring this back into the paranormal. This ain't a romance. But I was hard to leave, and um, like I really did sense like this dark energy in her house, and she had just got out of a really bad, dark relationship, and like, terrible things happened that should never happen. And uh, I, I felt it. It was just heavy. And you guys all know he has a paranormal feel. You walk into place, you're like, oh, shit, man. Like, this is, this is rough. And I just felt it. And it was really deep. And I didn't want to say anything to her. Like, you don't, like, meet someone and be like, oh, by the way, I'm crazy. You know? And I just, like, <laughs> I, I died. And, like, you know, like, I did this. And I see demons. And it would just not work out, right? And you so, actually did it a week later. Well, yeah. But, I mean, he had a way to say it. But the well, funny thing is, is I actually, um, before I left, I, I, I prayed over the home. I, I laid hands on everyone inside the home, prayed over them, um, cleansed the house. Mm. First day, like randomly, I don't know, it was weird. Um, it, was, it, was, it was definitely interesting. But from that, I don't think we ever have spent more than like a day away from each other, right? Wow. No. So, but and you end up moving. And that, that actually, that actually, as a matter of fact, that story, about what happened inside that apartment is actually going to be featured on a show we just wrapped in Chicago. Uh, it's called the Scariest Night of Our Life. That's my, I'm doing an episode myself. Uh, it's a storytelling show. Um, and, and it kind of encompasses um, that story. And I'm hoping that it, they've painted the picture <laughs> at least like 90%. It would be great. Uh, of, of what was actually going on um, in that home, um, which involved uh, and actually a man that my, kept my son, or my, my soon to be son, uh, kept saying, oh, snake's here, snake's here. He's talking to snake in the bathroom, all this crazy shit. And mm. like, snake, what the hell is that? Snake, this guy's snake. It's weird. Like, what's wrong with the kid? And she, well, he has autism. I'm like, oh, I don't even know what that is at that point. You know, I have no idea. It's a mental illness. I had no idea. I was completely undereducated. Um, and, and then he starts out this kid, Nicholas. Mm. And then I started seeing a little kid in the house. And I started seeing this gigantic thing that I saw actually as a child um, growing up. And it was about nine foot tall, probably about four foot wide this massive beast of, of a shadowy figure, very masculine, no facial features, but it wouldn't do anything. What it would do is scare the shit out of because it didn't do anything. And it would just sit there and it would just stare at me all night. I mean, all night. It was never like a night for years that this thing didn't show up. And I remember when I saw it in that house and I said, oh, I knew. It was immediately like, okay, I know what this is. It's not good. You know, like, I'm not going to say anything right at this point because I don't want to scare anybody. And I think that's the biggest damaging thing we do as paranormal investigators today is that 
we scare the shit out of people. Mm -hmm. Like as residential cases, we take them and, and like not saying us, but people in the community, unfortunately, they take these cases, they go on there and, and they run people's lives. And, and it, you have to be very, 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 very careful. And obviously even in the beginning back then, I, I don't want to say anything to her, you know, like, oh, by the way, there's this gigantic shadow in your house. Probably would have never went on that first date. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, needless to say, what we found out was, is from talking and interviewing everyone in the apartment, that that house, um, years back, there was No, because I was leaving and I asked, hey, my son That's and right, my boyfriend yeah. was having a lot of issues with things. And she's like, well, just heads up, uh, there was a man that lived there and he actually uh, drowned a kid in the bathtub. Oh my God. So I'm like, oh, thanks. Why could you have told me that before yeah, I moved there? You took yourself so, out afterwards. Yeah. It was like a hostage thing in the house, evidently. Um, which kind of was amazing, uh, like how everything clicked. Um, but a lot of things, but that, that particular show does kind of showcase that a lot. And it's, it's a lot of detail to it. Uh, and a lot of things that happen progressively. Uh, she went out of town one time and uh, we're sitting, I'm sitting there by myself and I'm like, I, I bought all this crap. She didn't have anything, you know? And like, I, you know, I was in a good spot in my life and I went out and I got some different stuff, some religious pictures and all this crap in the house. I'm doing all this stuff, I'm all happy. She's gonna come back, she's gonna be so stoked. And I remember I'm hanging up this picture, like, um, by a wall, like right there in the closet, and it was a, it was Jesus shepherding sheep in the darkness. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm hammering this picture up, I've already put it up, and all of a sudden this black mass out of nowhere materializes in, in the hallway. And it just, it floats in between my feet. And like, I'm like frozen, like, cause not only did I see it, I felt it, and I knew it. And my first thought was, oh, there's a black cat inside the house. I didn't know they had a cat, that's weird. <laughs> uh, and then like, as it gets closer, and I'm realizing there's no shape, there's no nothing to it, it's just, it's just kind of floating um, between uh, my feet. And I realized it was a very angry, like, angry um, presence in the, in the home. I remember the time we started to change, again, cleanse the house. A whole bunch of crazy stuff, but we, we ran from it, um, essentially. Um, so we realized that it's not the places that are haunted, we're haunted ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and, and over the years, we've learned um, to live comfortably to some degree amongst the dead. We are not paranormal investigators that do a whole bunch of cleansing rituals and do all these things. And I know people talk about it all the time and we joke about it sometimes. Respect all those that do that. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, I know what I'm getting into, you know? And uh, I think no matter what I do, it, it's there. And um, no matter what kind of cleansing I do, or no matter what kind of ritual I do, it's almost like kind of productive in my opinion, because I'm just gonna go back out there and do it again. So I've already signed the death certificate to understand what it's gonna lead to. I already understand what's gonna happen. I think you finally are there too, or you feel the same way. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> like, hey. but uh, no, I, 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 really, I, really believe, I, I really believe though, like I mean, like, everyone always says, hey, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? Trying everything doesn't work. Don't really care. Still going to move forward. Um, Marie's first paranormal experience. The funny story is, is when we, we, we I bought this house and we moved in together and we were like, we bought the house. We bought the one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I just, um, we were we were actually we we uh, I, I just proposed to you and uh, I said before we start making wedding plans, maybe we should have like one last conversation about you know, my past and who I am and the paranormal and, and all this. And, and we did. And at this point, you hadn't had like any like real defining moments in the paranormal. I started reading like into the stuff and I mean, I believed him. I mean, especially when he told me his, you know, story and everything. I mean, I don't know, like you guys just seen him breaking down. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, now I'm totally believe, I mean, believe everything because he's not a liar, but I don't know, it's just the way he looks. He knows he wasn't lying. So all these stories they've told me about, I'm like, okay. And then my autistic son's having all these experiences too. And I'm like, okay, there's something out there. I guess maybe I'm just one of those, you know, odd person out that's not gonna see anything or hear anything or whatever. So, um, but we were sitting back there. We were having like a bonfire. He was telling me some really, honestly, some stories I wouldn't even want to talk about ever again. Um, that he seen growing up and everything. I'm like, no, thank you. Um, I went in to go check on um, our kids, and as soon as I was walking up to the door, I seen almost just like that, a party this size, full body, I mean, full thing, and um, it was like a greenish gray thing run from my um, front door all the way into like this. There's like. I don't know, there's like a fence thing on by our house back there. Through a passenger. Yeah, and he just like ran. And I was like, what 
I all I heard was screaming, me, sorry. screaming, and I'm like, oh, like, well, I wonder what happened. She probably saw bugs. She scared frogs. And we had a pond in the backyard with frogs in there, and she freaked out. Because we figured, you know, this is a frog, and I'm kind of like laughing at it. Okay, no, it ain't just original frog. I'm petrified of frogs, and this frog was like this big. Yeah, that was kind of I mean, my worst nightmare. Uh, but yeah, so it was weird. She, she obviously comes, I mean, just having this conversation, mm -hmm. and she comes running back. As soon as she comes running back, like our our freezer, and we had an adjacent, like a detached garage, and all the stuff started flying out of the freezer. This crazy poltergeist activity out of nowhere. Like, boom, her, her emotional response, and yeah, the poltergeist effect, right? And then all this stuff starts getting thrown around. And like, what the? I'm, like, I'm like, what the hell? Like, this is great. Now she's probably not getting married now. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably over with. We're going to go to this house. Um, but I, I, I chose to walk over there to see and investigate because I figured, you know, and being logical, like a probably a coyote, she's probably got scared, maybe it was a javelina, she's dead set, I saw a fucking gargoyle. Well, I will say, something. Arizona has some crazy creatures there. Yeah. Oh. I mean, but I, I mean, that's at first I really did, I mean, because I've never seen anything, I've never had an experience, so I did. I, I'm always the one that's going to try to debunk. Till this day, I will try to debunk every single thing. Um, it's just, it's annoying, it, it, it's sorry. Like, really, I, it, it, yeah, I, it gets annoying. I mean, and I don't say almost all of it can be good, in but a way, but, but, um, but I was trying, like, oh, okay, some kind of animal. I'm searching in Arizona and creatures well, and what, yeah. There's and, nothing, obviously, that's going to walk like that, that has, like, freaking bone legs and shit or whatever. <laughs> But like, but as, as I was walking and approaching the fence, you could totally feel like the, this harsh presence uh, just started getting heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. Like almost like I was like walking through air that was just, you know, like heavy. It was it hard to explain. Just like it was insane. As we walked out in the front yard, like we had uh, lawn lights and stuff like in front of the yard, and they started like pulsating, like just bright, and then they would just go completely off. And then bright again, and then all of a sudden we hear this boom, this explosion, and then the whole like adapter box like blew up that was to the wall. So that was the start, right? I um, thought about running. I can't believe I did it. <laughs> seriously, like I, I don't know why you didn't really. Um, so we get married. Um,